Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Billy, and in this video I'll be doing a book review of All Quiet on the Western Front by Eric Maria Rama. And this is a World War I story. It's told from the perspective of Paul. He's a 20-year-old German soldier, and it's about his experience in the trenches and his friends' experiences uh, in the trenches of World War I. This was actually a reread for me. I read this a few years ago and I wanted to reread it because I had recently found out there's a sequel to this book and I wanted to read the sequel and so I just wanted to get like a refresher and I enjoyed it just as much the second time reading it as I did the first. This author was actually a soldier in World War One. He served, um, he's a German, he was a German soldier in World War One, and he served in the trenches on the front and so you really you really get that through the, his description of things in this book you really feel the emotion you really feel the emotions clipsy you're gonna have to get out baby no because i can't focus with you so like i was saying um you really feel the emotions of the soldiers in the trenches the savagery the desperation the sporadic moments of happiness, and it is a beautifully written story. The book talks about many different topics, and I just kind of wanted to point out like three kind of overarching things I noticed. So the first I noticed works kind of like the bird's eye of the system, what he talks about kind of how the system of war happens and is perpetuated through governments, and then also there's a piece about like the army experience the army as an institution and then the kind of psychological aspect of war and the long-standing implications that has on the soldiers and so one his one thing that he really wants to get wants to i believe get across is he doesn't want to glorify war and he really points out how the how governments use their people as pawns in war and he makes a good point of this when he says a word of command has made these silent figures our enemies a word of command might transform them into our friends at some table a document is signed by some persons whom none of us knows and then for years together that very crime on which formerly the world's condemnation and severus penalty fall becomes our highest aim the people that are deciding that their country goes to war are not the people who are actually fighting and there's actually a point in the story where like they're all sitting around um and he they're like what is what is all of this for and he's like well someone must benefit from this you know a big point that he wants to make that the people that are fighting like they they're not benefiting from this I think the other uh, interesting point on that part was like we're more similar than we are different he often says how you know his enemy you know they could be friends under different circumstances and um there's actually a point in the book where paul is stuck in like um a hole he's he's taking cover from fire and he's stuck in a hole with a french soldier i believe and the french soldier he kills the french soldier and he um dies and he's talking to the um he's talking to him and he's like you know before you were just kind of a, a figment you weren't i didn't really humanize you you were just kind of like i was told to fight you and now that i'm i'm here and i'm stuck and i'm seeing you like you're no different than me Another point that is made is also how they were made as young men to, in a way, guilted into serving. And he makes the example of um, his friend Joseph, who he really did not want to enlist. But, you know, the rhetoric that they were pushing in schools, his teacher was like, you have to enlist. Like, it's the, it's the patriotic thing to do. You have to. And then the friend goes off and he dies in war. And then, you know, they find out like three months later that his draft card wasn't going to be pulled until three months after he died, after he enlisted. And they thought he could have had three more months of life. So you have the, the government 
that's making these decisions and then the people that are actually having to carry things out and you have the way that they do that and push that through the idea of uh, patriotism and then another aspect is how they present the war to the people who aren't fighting so there's a point of when paul is on leave and he goes back home like is bad on the front like they they're hungry a lot of the time they're starving and someone comes up to him and he's like you know you have it you know we have been sending all our food to you you guys have it easy and Paul is just like what is this what are you talking about and it's just like there things are presented as not that bad to the people back home than they actually are there's just like this perspective of those who aren't fighting push against like the perspective of the soldiers who are actually out there and he Paul actually finds it very hard to be back home you know he want he finds it more like he understands he doesn't understand that world he understands more the life of being a soldier and he wants to go back to that because it's more it feels more at home than actually being home kind of leading into like my next area of kind of the army institution army experience there's the dynamics of the army and the kind of hierarchy and class system is very interesting so there's a point in when paul is on leave and he runs into a major and you know like i said paul's mind is just like trying to adjust to being back home and not feeling quite right and so he bumps into this major he's like oh i'm sorry i didn't see you there and the major is like that's not how you address like your superior and he actually makes Paul like march in the street and it's just like it's like clowns play at this point it's like crazy because that's not how things are on the front on the front you're just trying to stay alive you don't you don't think about like oh I need to address my superior in this way or that way and so I found that very um interesting even not just the difference of perspectives amongst like civilians and soldiers but amongst um those in the army who aren't fighting versus those in the army who are and another thing that he talks about in terms of being in the army is he talks a lot about the connection between the soldiers and the camaraderie and there's one point in the book where it's um it's paul and his superior and they're eating and he says we sit opposite one another, Cat and I, two soldiers in shabby coats, cooking a goose in the middle of the night. We don't talk much, but I believe we have a more complete communion with one another than even lovers have. And it's not like a romantic thing at all. It's just they've been through so much together and they just have this deep comfort with, with each other. Like they don't even have to be saying anything. They could just be sitting and eating and it just feels it's again, those small moments of happiness. This segues kind of into the psychological like aspects of war and fighting, you know, just those small moments of happiness they have to grab onto. And it's during those small moments that, you know, he mentions many times, you know, you can't think too hard about anything. You can't think too much about that person you just killed or that your, your friend who just died or your friend who's off to the hospital who you know is probably going to die like you can't think too much about those um those things that happen because if you do you would just you would just crumble like you wouldn't be able to handle it handle it and so they have to he describes it as transforming like almost into a, like beasts and savages um when it's time to fight and just those experiencing those horrors of war and just having to kind of com compartmentalize that in their in their mind and the way he describes it is very he describes that in such vivid language and beautiful language and so i'll just read a portion he says all other expressions lie in winter sleep life is simply one continual watch against the menace of death it has transformed us into unthinking animals in order to give us the weapon of instinct. It has reinforced us with dullness so that we do not go to pieces before the horror, which would overwhelm us if we had clear conscious thought. It has awakened in us the sense, the sense of camarad comradeship 
so that we escape the abyss of solitude. It has lent us the indifference of wild creatures, so that in spite of all, we perceive the positive in every moment and store it up as a reserve against the onslaught of nothingness. And so it's these things that they are dealing with. And, you know, like I said, Paul, he's a young soldier. He mentions how, you know, there are older soldiers who, when they go back home, they've known something different. They have a wife, they have children, and they, you know, they have that to go back to and memories to go back to. But for these young soldiers, this is all that they know. And he talks about like, how can we live life after this? Like you you already saw his experience being on leave he says all this i know all these things that now while we are still in the war sink down in us like a stone after the war she'll waken again and then she'll begin the disentanglement of life and death he already can see that they're never going to be the same whether you know they live or you know even though they live on they're not going to be the same these are experiences that they're going to have to live with and and kind of work through even as they get older and as you know life after the war it's still going to be they're still going to be dealing with the war this is a very good book i really enjoyed it i think i would highly recommend people read it what i really like about it is that it doesn't it doesn't glorify war i think it gives a really realistic depiction of it and the biggest thing i think uh take away from this book is he's Rama is really wants people to ask the question like what is what is the point is war is war really worth it that's my thoughts on all quiet on the western front if you have read this book i would love to know what you thought about it what things stuck out for you i did read the sequel to this which is the road back if you are interested in me also doing a review on this book if you guessed it i did really enjoy this book as well um <laughs> but if you would like me to do a review on this book as well uh please let me know but uh thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video